every time he would barbecue, I would take photos of his ribs or his process or whatever it was, pork butts or briskets. And uh, I created a page and we were like, what should we call it? Like, I'm like, it needs to have a name. And you, because my last name is Munoz, and my friends just kind of turned it into Moo, like, it's like stuck. a cow. It's and, still and Moo. And so it's stuck. And so, yeah, whenever I see some of like my oldest friends, they don't call me Andrew, they, they call don't. me Moo. Some of the awards that we've got along the way, um, food and wine, they do like a kind of an annual like best barbecue in every state. From there, it went to like LA Times 101 list. And during the pandemic, it wasn't ranked and we made it as a pop-up, which was kind of wild. And then this past year, 2022, they went back to ranking the list. And then they emailed us like, here's a pair of tickets for you guys. We're like, all right. And so we went. But we're in the crowd and we're what's on like big jumbo screen and there's mm -hmm. many people around and everyone's like applauding and just like waiting to see what numbers and what names keep getting dropped and they get down to 20 and I'm like I don't think we made the list 15 10 8 7 loose craft barbecue I still get chills I think the momentum of all of that just kind of pushed it into like this current year and we That's haven't fair. really had a slow day since January 1, so. So our work week at Moose, it was funny. We get a lot of like, why don't you guys open seven days a week? Mm -hmm. We want barbecue. We're like, well, our style of barbecue is very different. We're open four days. We have our team come in Tuesdays. Um, we just start getting our sausages ready, so the meat grind it down. This is there. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So this is from the trim right here? Yeah, this is from uh, brisket trim. This is all deco. Gotta mix uh, about like 150 pounds of uh, meat and then stuff it all on Wednesday. So you guys have three all together types of sausage? Yeah. Okay. okay, and what is this? This is the hot gut. Okay. So we gotta mix this for longer than we do the other ones because there's no moisture in this. Yeah, so we mix it till like, basically till it looks like a can of tuna. <laughs> Prepping out the cheese that's gonna go on the jalapeno cheddar because it doesn't really fit in the, the grinder that well. And what are these used for? These are, these are used for the poblano pocket sausage. Okay. Yeah. So what are you looking for to know when it's time to pour them off? Once they get like all black pretty much, there's no not like any green. That way they're easy to peel. So they're basically like burning like the skins. What would you say this is like the most popular sausage? Yeah, this is one of the most popular sausages. Texas barbecue is what we do in LA. Um, it's what got us started. It's what sparked that light and that love for interest in barbecue. And it's really what we wanted to introduce to LA. Because one of the things that was kind of missing in our beautiful city, that's a melting pot of great food, great culture, tons of diversity, was that there wasn't a lot of options in terms of like different styles of barbecue in Los Angeles. Uh, we've been at the brick and mortar for two years um, in June. So we're in June now, two weeks will be uh, exactly two years. Uh, and it's, it's pretty much everything we wanted when we were looking for a restaurant space. Initially, I thought it was gonna be too big and you know, some days it feels too small. We have uh, 24 taps that we use. So then if we wanted to, we have an additional 14, but that's kind of our sweet spot. We generally rotate between 20 and the full 24. Yeah, we have a great tap room uh, that goes with, with it. So it's kind of nice because, you know, you know, beer and barbecue go very well together. So this is our dining room floor. So the bar seating here, we have these table tops. Uh, this thing right here, these tables were here and I kind of liked them because it reminded me of like a, like an ugly drum barrel. Yeah, totally. With the top too. on it. And then here's our back lot, so our back patio. So oh, wow. this is kind of nice. It just uh, expands the dining room a bit. It allows people to come outside and eat during, you know, nice weather or just if we're packed inside. Yeah. Uh, and then that's our little, Fat stack uh, demo pit that uh, I've used one time since we've had it. Yeah, so this is our big fat stack. Probably still needs to be cleaned out, but 
from Sunday. I, was, I finished my cook and I was out of here. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah, so, but yeah, it's a pretty big bed. You know, pretty standard, 1,000 uh, gallon. That, um, these are doubles. These are uh, cucaracho pits that we got uh, from Fort Worth. Oh, uh, and then this cool. is just our, you know, our BQ. That's uh, it's our hog cooker. So if we're not doing hogs in it, we'll do chickens. That's awesome. We're from this part of town. This is Lincoln Heights, which is... It used to be the original East LA. But, the, yeah. the original East LA. So the fact that we're here and we were able to find our dream spot, like we're so grateful for it. This spot was waiting for us. Mm. It really, really was. This is for the steepen. Okay. No. I'm sorry, what is that? For the estita, the corn estita. Corn, okay. Yeah, corn. Now we're, got, we're going into getting other things ready like sides. So we need to start chopping up potatoes, and we need to start chopping up parsley, the meat's grinding down for our burger patties. Basically, I'm trimming up the mohawks. We cut them down off the brisket. So if it's fatty like this, I'll trim it off here. This part will go for burgers, and this piece will grind up the tallow. So are the burgers like 100% mohawk then? We'll throw some lean trim in there too. Okay. Yeah. So they're brisket burgers. Yeah, brisket, yeah. yeah. All of that stuff happens on Monday, Tuesday. There's a lot of prep that needs to happen on earlier in the week to make the rest of the week successful and run smoothly for us. Mm -hmm. By Wednesday, we're finishing off everything. So we're casing all of our sausages. So what are you doing right here? Right now, I'm getting the casings ready on the horn. Now we're about to stuff the verde sausage. You need it to be wet when you do this, because if it's dry, it's gonna be hard to like maneuver, like move it around and stuff. We're making all of the sauces, so um, we don't cut any corners at Moose Craft Barbecue. Everything we do that you taste on our tray is made in house. This is all the spices for the sauce. Yeah, so these are three different ones. This is gonna be the gold sauce. This is gonna be the, our like, classic sauce. And this one's for the uh, Korean, that we put on the Korean pork belly. It smells great. It smells really good, yeah. This one's good, super yeah. tangy. Mm -hmm. Really good. So that means our pickles, our pickled red onions, our barbecue sauces, our sauces for our burgers, everything we make from scratch. Uh, yeah, it's a process. So we do that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We also get desserts done mm -hmm. in those three days too. It started with the key lime pie. And that was the very first dessert we, we offered at Moon's. But I mean, people love banana pudding. They, 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 you love banana yeah, pudding too. A lot of people do. Now I can't get it off the menu because people are like, where's the banana pudding? So here I am, making banana pudding. Whatever ends their meal on a happy note, I am all for it. All right, I got a sneak peek bite of the banana pudding. Let's see how this tastes. Smooth, that biscuit, man, so rich. Perfect bite. Mm. This is gonna be really good. We started in six years ago. In a couple of weeks, on June 12, we're gonna celebrate our two year here. And it feels like it was just yesterday we were scared shitless signing a lease for this place. <laughs> this one is a little, so that when it's cooking, they're just not, like, it's like burning out, you know? You're still gonna get a little bit of like Christmas on the edge. At least it's not just like burnt, burnt you know what I mean? Even this is going to be a little funky because it's like kind of separate. I could get rid of this rib, but I don't really want to. Even if this rib goes bad, then it's going to protect this one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Take your time making the sausages. If you rush it, then it's going to be a nightmare. Patience is key. You don't have to say, but what is the rib growth? Oh, it's the um, main ingredient for this is love. Damn, dude. <laughs> You're gonna make the people cry, man. Oh, yeah. How much milk do you get to that? We brought a knife to buy the all the love. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
That's pretty strong. My father-in-law had told me, he was like, if you ever go to Texas like for meetings, like you should try barbecue out there. I heard it's really good. So they took me to like one of the top 50 spots at the time and I was blown away. I went back again a month later and I swear the beef rib was like the size of my forearm. And I remember ordering like bear ribs and brisket and I like had one bite and I was kind of hooked. We're not Texans, we're, we don't claim to be from Texas, but I think we've done enough homework and research and practice to, you know, stand pretty close to what traditional Texas barbecue is. Party next one. Yeah, when we first opened it, I was doing more of these cooks, like... You'd hear there's, there's like one lady who gets like super loud. <laughs> Sometimes when the moisture starts to pull out a little, the seasoning kind of runs a little. So I just like to touch them up on the edges just to make sure that it's kind of even. That's pretty much it. Big pork wings. This one's a little trickier because it's a, a flat box. Yeah. But I started taking photos and I started posting his work. Um, I started using hashtags to like gain followers and gain interest, you know, just kind of playing the whole Instagram marketing thing. And we started gaining followers. And I told them, I said, look, I was like, maybe we should like have a pop-up one day, like underground pop-up and just invite these complete strangers that follow us. If there's interest, they'll come and that'll let us know if they like the food, if they like what we're doing. Um, and I got him to agree on it. And he was like, yeah, that's cool. Let's try it out. And uh, I remember going out to the front to grab wood because the wood guy had dumped the wood on my lawn. And I had a cord of wood like in a big old pile ruined my grass. And I go to the front and grab some wood to take it to the back. And I see someone in the front. And I was like, oh, you're the first one here. And the guy was like, oh, no, like um, there's a lot of people here. And our, our, our fence in the front, it's a brick fence, and it goes all the way to the front, and it's high. So I couldn't see past it, and I went around, and the line was like like four houses down, almost practically to the corner, and I was like, oh, crap. Everybody get in my backyard. This and not good. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, so we did that one event, and we we're like, all right, we can't do this anymore. So uh, from there, we just kind of started doing breweries, and uh, after the breweries, we ended up at Smorgasburg and yeah. Yeah, it's just times just gone <laughs> by so fast and mm -hmm. we still can't believe that we've gotten here, but. Yeah, like it was for fun, right? It was like something we both enjoyed doing. Um, we never really did it thinking about like, oh, we're gonna do this to make money, right? It was just kind of like something to do on the weekend, something to kind of escape like the nine to five and just the routine of things and kind of, you know, hang out, meet new people, barbecue. Right before service, things that go on the smokers are like the thinner meat. So we'll do the ribs, we'll do the turkey, we'll do pork belly uh, burnt the tins. pork belly burnt tends. Once it starts cooking, it's like 2 a.m. Get the fire started, get the meats on. He takes the first part of the shift, and then Adrian shows up and finishes another eight hours and makes sure that everything's finished mm -hmm. for the day. How's it going, man? How are you? I'm Anthony. I'm Adrian. Nice, nice to meet you. Meeting. How's it going? Belly's done, turkey's done. Uh, biscuits are rolling. Dark time, done it, but it's gonna be close. Alright, you just gotta come back tonight? Yeah, he's actually probably a fuck 10 shit. <laughs> I always give him a hard time, but <laughs> once he gets his, uh, once he gets going, yeah. he's still a beast. He's still a goat over here. Yeah. His bark is building up. I'm gonna come test him after that. Uh, like, for example, this looks pretty good to me. Well, then I'll come in here and see, you know, fill it, poke around. It feels nice and soft. That means the fat's rendering. And then I'm gonna split it open just in here. Most people stick their finger in it. I just like to split it and just look for that nice caramel color. And then that's gonna tell me that they're ready to go. And then we'll finish off cooking and smoking the sausages just to give them that nice 
final blast of heat and smoke, and it gives it that snappiness that we're looking for. And also um, the burger. And the burgers, too. We got inspired by some friends of ours in Texas, Leroy and Lewis. They do a really delicious smoked burger. So we created these burgers, smoked, seasoned, like a brisket. So how many burgers are you doing? Uh, today, we're probably gonna start with about 35. Let's see where that leads us. Uh, Thursdays are actually pretty good. We get a, kind of a big lunch crowd. Uh, it's kind of weird too, like when we have this kind of weather, you would think it would work against us. <laughs> barbecue but people show up on uh on these cloudy days lately thursday's our first day of the week it's go time Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. The people that come through the doors, honestly, that's what really makes it wor uh, worth it. Like yes. the awards, the recognition is cool, but that's not really why we got into it. We got into it because we loved what we, uh, do. what we do. She loved to cook, and I loved to barbecue, and it was kind of like the perfect combination of both of our uh, passions. Their reactions when they have it for the first time is very much to the reaction that I remember having when I had it for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that is so special. We want people to come to Moose and feel like if they've been to Austin or they've been to Texas, when they come to try our food, that they're like, hell yeah. Like we found a spot where we don't have to hop on a plane to go to have, like I can get my fix at Moose if I'm in LA. I can go get that brisket. I can go get those ribs. At least that's our hopes. <laughs> Food is a lot more approachable. Barbecue can be super rich and bold, but if you present it properly and you have the right types of sides and you balance everything out, just learn as you go. We want to show, and I think we've proven, we can hold our own with the best of them. Everybody says live up to the hype, right? It does have to live up to the hype, which I think that we do here. <laughs> when we opened in 2020, we got the Orange County Register. We got best new restaurant, and the, the next year we got best restaurant in Orange County. And then we got in the uh, new discovery for the Michelin Guide, and then a few months later we got the uh, Big Gourmand. It's, it's, it's awesome. I think uh, Michelin has been starting to realize that this is a respectable craft and we're, we're being recognized for that. It's a lot of hard work. I mean, I can argue that it's a lot harder work than, you know, being in a fine dining restaurant. Is it like pretty hard to like wake up this early in the morning? It was, it definitely is. You know what, even after doing it for a few years, it was still, it's still hard to get up sometimes this early. Morning shift when we first opened the restaurant in 2020, um, August, during quarantine. And then, yeah, that weekend I, I, was, uh, I started up morning shift and I've been doing it pretty much ever since. Working on three years this August. <laughs> That's when you know it's clean, huh? <laughs> so this morning we're gonna start on some briskets, our Creekstone Farm briskets. We're gonna go 20 of them just for tomorrow, but nothing too big. And we're also gonna be smoking pork shoulders that'll go on. Just kind of build a little walk in some briskets. Yeah, that's smart. Those, yeah. those uh, pork butts can take a lot of heat. Yeah, exactly. Nice. They're way more forgiving. Instead of doing a blocking log, you got a pork butt line. That's, yeah. that's actually really smart. <laughs> yeah, Chris, is uh, he's just got such a great attitude. He's a very hard worker. He's proven himself to be super valuable to the team. He's somebody I truly entrust with, you know, our name, which, you know, Heritage is, might as well be my last name. You know, it's something that old near and dear, so. It's a really gentle, gentle fire. You don't want every piece of wood combusting all at once. Because what you're really gonna create is, is it's gonna be more of a convectional heat. You're not gonna get as much smoke. Uh, one thing that we're really proud of is just getting those offsets that you saw out there, NSF certified for food use, which 
we're very happy to say that, you know, that we were the first and which opened the doors for everybody else that you see in California that's that's doing um, Texas style barbecue. Well, the bridge is looking pretty damn good. Yeah, they are. That's what we want right there. That's exactly what we want. I am the butcher here at Heritage Barbecue, so I take care of all protein that comes through this restaurant. It's all encompassing. It's saving bones for stock, making sausage, rendering tallow, taking care of all the grind for sausage, burgers, anything else, any other daily specials. Every piece of protein goes through my hands at this place. Lennon started with us for three years as well. Very talented guy, creativity, is something that like he excels at. I was a butcher for going on four years at a retail butcher shop working whole animal so using the entire animal for a retail and culinary purpose. You know here we like to do things a little differently and so you know I could bring them up get a hog in and tell them to you know completely take it apart and and you know hey make pate with this and do that with that and make sausage with this. Crazy how you can do that without even looking. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's that muscle memory. Once you have the tension buildup and everything, mm -hmm. it's not gonna go much elsewhere. You can, if you put on a little more tension, there's the risk of it rupturing for sure. You can feel when it's about to do that. Yeah, you, can, you know, you don't want to over twist them anyway because there's gonna be swelling and shrinking when it cooks. Mm. And the guy is so fast. He is fast. Crazy fast, yeah that muscle memory. Just doing it over and over again. Aside from that, put on a good album and find your zone and work through it. Well, we use it mostly for like add-on brisket. So like if it's a chopped brisket sandwich or something. Like okay, that. got it. Is that going on today as well? Um, I believe they are throwing it on today, yeah. So right now we have our pork belly char siu. Uh, the char siu is actually marinated for about three, maybe maybe four days before we, uh, before I pull it out and I season it and we'll throw it on. Is that sugar or like a mix? It's a mix. Okay. Yeah, it has brown sugar in it, Chinese five spice, uh, a few different things. It's gonna be a about 10 to 12 hour cold smoke. We're gonna get mopped in um, this marinade, this mop sauce that we make up. So how did they make the menu or has it always been like a staple on the heritage menu? Um, you know, we, we just, we added it on pretty early, but our pork belly char siu is something that we add as a staple pretty much at this point. It's always on the menu. That'll be a pork belly for the week right there. It's not really necessarily like a straight Texas style barbecue, but we are definitely inspired by the Southwest, but we take like a modern approach to our craft barbecue. My barbecue journey started in the backyard. We spent a lot of time in the backyard just cooking. So um, I had not been trained or taught. I remember one time cooking a brisket and a pork butt together and pulling them out at the same time. And you know, you, you burp, you could taste it like the next day. You know what I mean? That's how, <laughs> but everybody around me uh, said that they loved it, so. Got some mad color on there. Mm -hmm. So we like to see. Ooh, the towel's just going down. There's definitely a lot of history here in this town. When we were doing construction here, we had to have an archaeologist be here and a native monitor because anytime that they put a shovel or a backhoe into the ground, um, had to be dumped out and examined. Actually, Chris Granado, I think you got to meet him. That's how we came to cross paths. He actually worked here as a monitor. Uh, my shift is uh, I'm kind of just watching the brisket, wrapping brisket, wrapping the pulled pork. It's good to always have somebody that like comes from the community and none of us are from this area. So he's been almost like an ambassador to heritage here in this town. Yeah, he's with us, man. He's, he's, a, he's a lifer and he, he loves what we do. He's probably like one of our biggest supporters here in San Juan. 
<laughs> it's changing all the time as far as technique wise. You are always trying to improve. Always trying to improve, especially when it comes to the brisket. He cares tremendously about everything. And if something doesn't come out right for whatever reason, he takes it very personally. Yeah, every every cook is different, you know, I mean, as far as, you know, when when it's ready to come off. The key thing is actually the feel of the brisket. I think your side is still a little tight. Still a little tight, so we have a little bit. How long did it go? Another eight minutes, five, eight minutes. We sell more brisket than any other protein. So, still our bread and butter. I'm just not too happy with that, that mushy part of it. I'm not flying like that. That's fine. That's the only thing I was afraid of when I opened that one up. <laughs> He's one of those guys that'll come in in the morning and say like, while they're cutting the first brisket, like how's how's brisket cutting? And he's been a he's a, been a valuable guy for us here, especially within the community. So where did the Heritage Barbecue name come from? Uh, so when we first started out, uh, Nicholas and I, our executive chef, he came up with that name. Nicholas just thought it would be a, a great name for something that we, we can express like where we came from and uh, give some love to our roots and our ancestors. I always be here in the morning. I always joke around like, fuck, one of those kids got loose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a pretty big difference from yesterday to today. Yesterday, we, yeah, we were cold, we were smoking briskets and um, pork belly, and yeah, it, 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 there was no time frame yesterday. Today, we have to have stuff ready for service, so it's a little bit more of a, of, a, of a jump in your step. We have pork ribs going on, we have chicken on, we have briskets on. Even though, yeah, it's a couple more proteins that we're getting ready, but we're, they have to be ready for service. Nonetheless, you know, we're still keeping things going. Not really pushing things too crazy. You know, we still want things to come out right. My guys that I have in the kitchen, most of them have these really cool fine dining backgrounds. They're true chefs. They make these amazing dishes. Even though we have the, the new restaurant open and I'm, I can't be here all the time, I still get to see these things that they put out every day and they just blow my mind, you know, when I get to see these specials that they put out. About 8 o'clock, we'll end up wrapping our pork ribs up and in aluminum foil. So, bro, they were going to need you all weekend, homie. <laughs> and then we'll let them go for about an hour. And in about 20 minutes, we're going to throw on tri-tips. Uh, we sell a lot of tri-tip here. That's kind of an untraditional item for Texas barbecue. It's, it's uniquely Californian, so uh, we actually like to smoke, cold smoke our, our tri-tip, and then we finish them over live fire on the mill scale. The before. <laughs> We've had friends that moved out to Texas, so we started uh, making these trips out there to eat barbecue. That's kind of what really got my interest sparked in, in doing um, Texas style barbecue. We did pop-ups at breweries for about three years before we got our brick and mortar. The pandemic hit and you know, not being able to get a lot of the proteins that we needed to run a barbecue restaurant, we started to get really creative and that's when we started bringing in a lot more vegetable dishes, things that were at a better price. So these vegetables are for the salad? Yes. Okay. This is a hot box asparagus that we put that are incorporated in. Morgan is awesome. Morgan came to us, I think about a year into operating. But yeah, he's a very, very talented chef. Cares about what he does and he's a great leader. Personally, I think he excels in like doing those things that we want to do. Uh, more here, which is like working with vegetables and like smoking vegetables and grilling vegetables and doing these composed dishes with them. My in-laws are vegan. A lot of inspiration for plant-based cooking. You give vegetables the same amount of time and attention that you do to meat, it tastes just as good. It can be the, the center of any dish. That's, that's somebody who I think uh, a lot of people look up to and uh, just his work ethic is something that I think a, a lot of people gravitate towards him and they, like everybody kind of wants to work like Morgan because he's so good at working, you know?
Chef Nick has created quite the, uh, the kitchen here. It's like no other kitchen I've been in where it, you know, everybody wants to say that they're family and this place they really treat you that way to where you know you might have to blow up, blow out with one kitchen, cook one day. Settle our differences and get working. It doesn't matter how long this, this line will go down the block and it will never end until we sell out. Yeah. And he keeps it light and he keeps it fun. Yeah, no stress. He's not driving. throwing shit, he's not yelling. Yeah. We're open to the public Wednesday, opening at 11 a.m. Could get everything pretty much done about 30 minutes before we open. Can't just like videotape it, not try to have it. Did you really put it in his mouth? No, no, I, oh, man, I, I was thinking about it. <laughs> like, uh, that shot would have been amazing. Yeah. That's a love shot, man. You know what I mean? Instant million views right there. Yeah. He's like, when I was doing this, he put it in my mouth. He didn't even ask me. We do things like tacos and we do um, bottomies and we do you know, masubis and all these other sorts of things and we're just a big melting pot and so like that's what that's what ends up coming out in our food you know and that's that's what kind of where we're at right now. Those tacos, normales, aquí, y uh, chico frijoles, chico mac. Todos, todos aquí. Okay. We always have the sense of urgency in what we're doing. We go about it in a timely manner. There's some places that they're unnecessarily slow and that might be that they just want to have a longer line for whatever reason they like the look of it I think we just want to give them an all-around good experience and if you just have like if you're efficient your food's good and this and that like they shouldn't need to wait that long oh my gosh yeah just right here all right little trip around the world that we've got here. We've got the spares, are done with the white oak and with hickory now. We do we use a, a mixture of both of them. It's brought out a really nice sweetness in, in the pork. We've got the tri-tip you saw char charring off earlier today. Today's sausage is a spicy Italian. Char siu belly is right underneath there. Banana pudding, make the custard every morning fresh. Sausage mac today, and it's got our Texas hot link that's ground up in there. We have our brisket beans as well. And then one of our uh, sandos that our Chef Max puts together is our chimmy aioli sando. And then the Cindy salad, which you saw getting built up earlier. So I really hope you enjoy, man. We get the fixings, I'm gonna go get you some sauces. And awesome, then you're set. thank you, brother. Thank Appreciate you. it. I would love for everybody to work here for the rest of their lives, you know? <laughs> to see like my team happy, to see them smiling, to see them, you know, joking around, working as a team, working as a family. They take pride in their work. Being able to have something that I love to do and share it with everybody. We want people to come back pretty often. We want them to feel like they were in a family backyard barbecue. That's what we want to send them away with. An amount of hospitality and like friendliness that making people feel good. Even if they were waiting a long time in line, nine times out of 10 when they're leaving, but they're in a really great mood. I think that's what we strive for here. So good. We consider ourselves a top tier brand. You can walk up and you can look at, at a rotisserie, you can look at an offset, or you can look at a San Marino, that's m, &M. For Most people that build smokers and stuff like that, this isn't something that they've done for 15, 20 years. They've never really been in the back of houses like we have. Passion meets skill and talent if the results are clear. I think we're about to the point now that we have it dialed absolutely to the nines. So are we gonna get a chance to fire up some of these smokers? We don't do that here. Yeah. <laughs> We have some pretty awesome names that use us. We have Goldie's, which is ranked number one for Texas Monthly. Number two interstellar coming up that uses us. And we also have Burnt Bean, which is ranked number four as well. We have in Texas Monthly, three of the top five using M&Ms. Location, oh, he's got two of ours now. The big one, Kevin Bloodsoe. Oh, he's at just one in James Beard Award. Mm -hmm. So you have Kevin Bloodsoe out of California, you have Andrew Munoz out of Moosecraft, and then you have Danny at Heritage. More humbled to have these guys, just fantastic names at the top of the game. That'll be using M&Ms. We are in Tool, Texas. 
which 99% of people have no clue where that is. It's at about an hour southeast of Dallas. And we started in a 30 by 40 shop and then we moved over here. We thought we were gonna outgrow this thing in like three years. We had a three year plan and we outgrew it in like three months. So we're having to try to figure out kind of what we're gonna do in the future, but that's a good problem to have. Uh, I am very much ingrained in, uh, in Texas barbecue for a long time now. My background is in re repair side. Eminem was created. My dad, his name is Michael Miller. My name is Michael Miller. So at that point in time, it was Eminem Barbecue Pit Repair. Mike and his dad saw what goes wrong with barbecue pits and what costs restaurants money for 15 years. And then about six, seven years ago, we created Eminem Barbecue Company. Eminem still works, you know, Michael and Matt. And that was a kind of an umbrella of everything because we're not just repair. And so that is a short story of kind of how it came to be. So are you like uh, building anything today? Yeah, I'm working on those uh, El Rays, the big ones, the one for Heritage, for Danny. I found out very fast that I just, I was not meant for the corporate world. I decided I wanted to do what I always loved, which was build cars and custom fabrication and work with my hands and I found a tech school. I made a call to check the school out and I was signed up for that day. I was a speaker at graduation and picked this top outstanding student in every single one of my core classes. I landed a job at a high end hot rod shop right out of the gate. I did that high level sheet metal, metal shaping, chassis fabrication, you know, from quarter million dollar cars to two million dollar cars for almost seven years. Yeah, there's serious R&D in everything we do one that yeah, all of it carries over from our background. We're a legit in-house fabrication shop, so yep. that's the balance of us hiring and training people is finding people that, if you don't like building and working things with your hand, because this is rough work, you know, grinding fabrication, but if you're not passionate about it, you won't last long here, mm -hmm. that's for sure. That's one thing that we advocate here. You know, we don't want, when you come, when you come here, that you just dread being here. We, we want to keep a really fun culture, but, you know, produce some cool stuff. So our wood fire rotisserie, basically, it's a thermostat control, castable, insulated, all wood fire smoker. These are simple seven and a half amp, runs less than a hair dryer, and, and it can run the entire rotisserie. And so what it is, it has an actuator motor that's opening a damper on the firebox, producing oxygen and closing oxygen, producing the oxygen and closing it all day long. We've actually got 12 plus hours on, on one load before. Instant savings in the most basic thing in wood. Anything we can do that helps people to see an instant, you know, impact in their pocketbook going, dude, I'm saving a thousand dollars a week in wood. We didn't come up with that concept. That concept has been around uh, kind of since 1968. But what we've done is we've taken this base design that we know can work and we just made it work better, last longer and, uh, and more improved. Basically, we have a rear firebox or a side loaded firebox and that runs off pure wood. Once you get your fire established and it runs, all the racks, there are 12 racks inside of a rotisserie that turns, so it's self-basting, constantly moving, nothing static, uh, delivers heat as absolutely evenly as possible. So we have an MM240, we have an MM1000, and an MM2000. It's our MM2000, which is our largest rotisserie. He's a veteran, so we did 30 millimeter rounds from a 18 warthog. So everyone loves them. I think they look killer. 60 to 72 briskets is about the range on it, so nearly 2,000 pounds of meat. Pretty amazing. It's like the capacity of two 1,000 gallon pigs. Yeah, yeah, very much so. It's pretty amazing watching the initial hesitancy yeah. from offset guys and hearing somebody that's as established as they are cook on it for a couple weeks. Learn, you know, learn the secrets. They're all a little different. Everything's different. And then getting the call and saying, I cooked the best brisket I've ever cooked, which is, I love hearing it because all the offset lovers and other people that are anti rotisseries, they can keep fighting it, but they're not going to be able to fight it for the yeah. long. Mocation. Yeah. He's a ball energy. He is. He's <laughs> awesome. Mo called me up and he's like, Mike, I just got to tell you this, man. He goes, I cooked the best brisket. I would put this against anybody in Texas. I'm telling you right now. And it came off that Eminem. He's been doing Memphis and May competing uh, about seven years now. And that's almost a Super Bowl of cook-offs. He's never got that final call. And he's like, Mike, I want you to build one of your 240s for me, specifically for Memphis and May. He's never cooked on a 240. And he called me up and he's like, Mike, 
I, I got the championship call. I, I'm making the top three. He's never got a globe like that. Never made the top three. And he's super excited and I'm super excited. I'm like, dude, you're about to make me cry, man. Like, <laughs> they're not only customers, they're friends. And we call them him and family. Like, when they, when they win, we win. And we help each other win. Like, can we put the best product out for them? But we love offsets too. We build them as well. And so what we try to do is say, hey, we're gonna build you the baddest pit no matter which, which one. We have to build these 100, obviously which is marketed at six briskets. It'll do eight, but Johnny himself said we put it at six because eight is a handful. But you can do it, but it's a handful. It's a little bit more to deal with. Uh, then we go straight to a 250 gallon, or 500 and 1,000 right now, is everything we own. Okay, so the Texas traditional uh, offset, you know, you have firebox on one end, stack on the other end. The design is not as old as it seems. You know, it, it almost feels like this has been around for a hundred years. 1983 is when the kind of first official Texas offset came in to fruition. And so with it not being all that old, really no one has done much tweaking to them. Kind of said, all right, well, here's here's kind of what we've done. Let's just keep rolling with the same thing we've done. Let's cut a big hole in it. Let's put a big firebox on it and let's roll. And then you burn the first four of your, your food. And so him and I are going, no, we're gonna come together. We're gonna come up with a design that, that you can utilize 100% of the pit. Full setup. Full castable bottom, so as this firebox heats up, coal beds established the actual bottom of this, which is the castable refractory, will heat up and resonates heat as well, which helps maintain an even pit as it goes. The most unique firebox in the game, so we have patented a flat bottom round top for that one honestly started it for pure function purposes. We like really big coal beds. So not only do you have your fire in there, that thing is a heating stone. You just have a constant warming heat source it holds heat other than anything it doesn't drop heat as much as other ones you know we want to make sure that hey this is a bad piece and this is awesome but i but this thing is going to operate this thing is going to run and it's going to serve every day we've actually done a lot of study and practice on thermodynamics basically moving heat around but this has our patent bypass system which basically allows us to function and actually cook and use door one which is pretty awesome so uh, we've been working on this for a long time. The absolute lightest, smoothest doors in the industry. This is a 3 8 thick plate door and setup, and this is our finger light doors. Pretty awesome. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's some other smooth doors in the game, but not as light and smooth as ours. We've got that freaking dialed. The phrase we say here a lot is functional aesthetics. That's kind of like a core value focus of m, &M. It's functional in the fact that everything we do, we don't just design or change something because it looks cool. We make it look cool. That's what we do. It's part of our style and our brand. It has that, you know, twisted steel and sex appeal. But whatever change we made was specifically because a restaurant complained about something. So everything is done by M&M. We don't outsource anything here. These are high-end, high-quality builds. We've been requested to do this biscuit test for a while now. Uh, and after many uh, reach outs, we're going to do the biscuit test. The biscuit test is basically the gold standard for looking at heat distribution in a pit. With biscuits, unlike barbecue, I like to get it up to like 300, 325. Yeah, and it basically because they're light, supposed to be cooked hot and fast and fluffy, will let you know instantly where the hot spots are in your smoker. I think the ultimate test is actually cooking in a smoker with a live fire at 325, 300 degrees and still being able to say, look at that, there's a fire right next to this and everything came out wonderful. All right. Lose a good, lose a good bit of heat loading it up. So we're going to go ahead and throw one more log. All right. Let it eat. So whether it's uh an offset or a rotisserie, every single one of those fires ran through them, every single one of them goes through a QC check. We, we already have them seasoned before they leave the shop. All right, so we're at about 20 minutes. Uh, the last log on it got her up to about 325, so it went a little quicker. A little quicker she, thought, watch, yeah. she, she thought she was. This right here, this is literally on the wall, and it's just a golden brown. Second row, third row. That's at 325. That's at 325. Flaky. <laughs> so we both we both were born in Dallas. So we actually met when we were ten. 
but not, we didn't hit it off quite yet. It was kind of competitive. Turned out we both like riding bikes and... Once we started hanging out, we were inseparable. 30 years now. I've been calling him Old Man Mike since he was 12, so that's all right. Yeah, that's, I think everybody has. <laughs> yeah, the darkest ones are at the bottom. That's right next to the fire box. We like taking our equipment and just throwing it in the fire. Trial by fire because then you get the best constructive criticism back on the plant when you have especially chefs and pit masters that we work with. Criticism and innovation are almost hand in hand. Here at Eminem, we welcome criticism. So El Rey is our first Santa Maria style grill. When designing that and wanting to come up with something unique, we came up with the cantilever arm design. So it's a free suspended. The arms are actually coming from the back and the grates and just the cables are hanging. And we're already seeing some people kind of trying to copycat around on the internet quick it's crazy how fast it within happens. a week I saw one in australia something whipped up that i thought it was something i built it's like holy shit, it looks just like something I did. it looked good i was yeah. like man it looks good it's amazing how much red tape you have to go through this because how simple people can just uh, divert here to change it so i think it ended up being a design patent basically for the aesthetics of cantilever style armor and that's also etl nsf certified completely kitchen safe bar rated yeah, the, the most, most expensive, expensive roll of stickers you'll ever see in your life. So NSF is, is that it's food safe. If you look at your refrigerators, to your stoves, to all that stuff, you're going to see this little blue tag. Because that lets the health department that's going to be coming into your restaurant to say, hey, this thing is healthy for the public to cook on. ETL is UL rating. That is your fire safety. That is to let your fire marshal go, hey, this thing has been tested and it's safe to put in your building or safe to have X, Y, Z. If you're starting a restaurant, if you're doing anything like that, I'm gonna look right at the camera. Uh, <laughs> you wanna make sure to have those certifications. <laughs> it took a year off my life to get these NSF and ETL certifications. Because of our history, we know these cities want NSF and ETL. They want UL certified equipment. Last thing we want to do is have somebody buy a $45,000 piece of equipment from us, spend a hundred grand, and then the city go, uh-uh. I couldn't imagine going through that. I can't sleep at night going through that, and I'm not the one building it. We will make sure these things are certified and ready to rock and roll, and we're going to go to bat for you too. So when the city calls you, when all these guys call you, we already have everything ready for you, and we'll work hand in hand with the city, we'll work hand in hand with the fire marshal. This is a trend we're seeing that is the issue. See anyone fixing it, so we're going to be the first one to fix it. These are the uh, backyard, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, this is the standard size for now. Our first one, this is the El Nino. So, our backyard model that we're really pushing on is our El Nino, which is our Santa Maria grill. Our base is a basically a 36 inch by 17 inch cooking grate, fully mobile, but also an option to remove from the stand if you want to put it in a counter. And it is basically the little brother to El Rey that has our same patented cantilever free suspended style with a really smooth gear and pawl. The Goldie's Backyard is the 100 gallon offset, which is Goldie's design built by Eminem. We do have a prototype backyard offset, but we're just not ready to drop it yet. Some call it the dark horse waiting in the back. <laughs> <laughs> the other one that isn't, isn't ready yet, it's not finalized, but we do have a mini backyard rotisserie. That is an absolute monster. The first prototype has just been cashing the checks and snapping nets. We'll open it up real quick. It can fit up to four briskets in it. All thermostat controlled, 100% all natural wood fired as well. There's no gas in this, there's no heater elements in this. It's natural wood fired. You can get six hours you know, uh, or so on a, a, a full firebox. Not only do we build equipment, service equipment, and work on equipment, but we cook on our own equipment. Yep. So you go to any event and there's, from what I see, there aren't any other pit builders that are out there slinging and firing with all the chefs, all the pit masters. And we enjoy it. Like we're in, we're in the whole industry. We're not just builders. We enjoy cooking, you know? And I like being around it. You get to work with some of the best people in the world at cooking. I'm learning from it too. So I think it's just the ultimate storm to creating the best product possible. First part done. Awesome. Let's go. So, almost four years, cooked and ran a kitchen at a barbecue restaurant in college. Yep. I needed a job and ended up running the kitchen for almost four years at a you know very high volume barbecue mm -hmm. restaurant. Learned a whole lot. So fun fact, he's probably one of the fastest slicers in the game. Nobody's seen it yet, but he is fast. Blessed. Look at the, the people that we get to meet. The, the years that we've put in, 
and the hours we put in and to see it all come to fruition, gratitude. I don't have to go do this, I don't have to do this, we get to do this. You know, when you have these customers that call you up and like, man, this changed my life. Made it to where um, I'm, I'm sane again because I was getting zero sleep. I, mean, I just smile for the entire day going, man, I just, I just love it. I absolutely love the fact of seeing our product go from stock on the shelf into building an absolute workhorse that is a unique one-off piece that we can repeat and turn into something that actually goes out and works for people. It kind of started with we wanted to build pits to figuring out what business we were going to build to now we 100% know exactly what we're building and what we're after. Hallelujah. The end. The end. <laughs> <laughs>
but I usually like using the whole ones and crushing them right when I'm about to use them. It's a little bit more fresher. But that's like our Lowry used to be ours. That and adobo, sazon. Yeah, man. So I'm from Dominican descent. Uh, I was brought up mainly with my Dominican family. So we have a good mix of, you know, what you would usually find at a barbecue spot, which are brisket, pork ribs, pulled pork, and then you have our arroz, maduros. So those are just things that when you go to a sweet 16 or a birthday party, you know, they have all the bandejas out on the table and you just put in a little bit of everything. And, and that's the beautiful thing, I think. Like, it just complements the meat and the meat complements everything else. All the pieces go well together and it creates this great, flavor and experience when you go and eat at bar. You go, Papa. Oh. Oh, that's good. Oh. <laughs> when you're on the line and you come in order at the at the cutting station, you know, we're here, we're talking, oh, hey, what's up? You know, it's like, it's such like a, a chill vibe, you know? Like, we try not to take ourselves too serious. Uh, because we want you to have a great experience. In DR, no matter how difficult it is out there, how much hardship they have, one of the biggest things is like, everybody's gonna eat, everybody's gonna have a good time, you know, drink their presidentes, and that's, I think, that's one of the biggest vibes that I wanted, you know, us to have at the restaurant. Oh! Our brisket, our brisket is uh, it's a Texas style brisket, but with Dominican flavors and seasonings. Um, then you have our pork ribs. Our pork ribs are also very different because they're not a very sweet a flavor profile. It's more of a salty, savory type of profile, you know? And then you have our Dominican style pork belly, AKA chicharrón. Also we have our chicken bits, uh, it's smoked and then it's fried. So you have that crispy skin and because it's smoked, it just has that soft, juicy interior. It's like, oh man, I just love our mac and cheese. And that thing gets all the bells and whistles and seasoning. Uh, you have our rice. We do a 24 hour bone broth with our bones that we trim off the bone-in bellies. Our cornbread, we have cinnamon, ani, so it's it's a it's a twist on it. And then you have our coleslaw, and we also have our platanos, which is my favorite side. Even just eating on a regular basis. You just want to chop it? Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, I'll give you a little bit of onions and coleslaw on the side. Oh, one of the biggest thing that people don't know is the sold out model. And it's crazy. You know, people think like you have an infinite amount of meat and you can produce an infinite amount of meat, but it's really, really impossible. And we've tried, and trust me, we've upped the quantities, man, but we're still selling out. So it's, it's tough. I think that's the biggest, the biggest difficulty. I would have to say we're cooking about five days out of the week. I'm gonna start cooking our briskets, our pork butts, um, our big proteins, you could say. As simple as it may seem, man, like this part right here, and knowing how much falls, very important. Because also, like, when you over-season, like, that's when you have, like, the, the rub that it comes off. Like, you'll just see, like, it comes off like a little chip. I really like the flavor profile of our brisket. I feel like it's very distinct. And, you know, apart from, you know, really focusing on the cook, I feel the flavor separates it as well. I feel like it's different. But we have uh, four pits right now, currently, and we have a 500 and three 1,000 gallons. We have our first 500 gallon. That's Big Red. The first 1,000 gallon is pink, and the third, and the fourth, we still didn't come up with a with a name, so they're like nameless right now. <laughs> so uh, now that you brought it up, I think they're feeling some type of way. <laughs> the burn-in, like the one that has the fat cap, you want it against the wall because that's where you're gonna have the most heat. 
deflecting off of. So it kind of protects it on that side. This side is much cooler. It's not that we open it up a lot, but we do peek inside of it. Which ones have a lot of moisture on top of, and we have to transfer it over to make sure it dries out. And also all the small ones in the back, and then we increment the sizes when it gets closer to the firebox. You know, it's typical stuff. In general, barbecue, I always used to barbecue at home, just like anybody else. And, you know, I got my first uh, wood chip smoker. Uh, so at that time is when I worked on the craft. I, the first time I did brisket was horrendous. I'm gonna work on fire management, see how good I can get, and I'll try to conquer brisket again. So for July 4th of 2019, I would have to say, I did like a July 4th uh, party, backyard party. He invited, it was like 30 people that came over. And I did the brisket. I was more methodical in the way I did everything. Well, it started at a precise time, had everything trimmed, seasoned, and stuff like that. And when I sliced into that first brisket, I was like, oh yeah, this is it right here. Where'd you find that stump? Uh, he gives it to me. Okay. Because every so often, you know, the, we lack precision and we end up uh, chipping away at it. So he gets that. We use White Oak. The supplier I have is one of the best. Harstale Greenhouses. He can get me the, like four or five cords just like that. It burns really good, neutral uh, flavored wood, so you can use it with any protein. It's just so well seasoned, burns great. And I've had a lot of people who borrow wood from me. They're like, yo, this is the best wood I've ever used. So I know for a fact that they're giving me quality stuff. Briskets right now with the current briskets that we have, about 14 hour cook on a good day. Our ribs and our chicharron, chicharron, they're usually around the same time, six, seven hours. Um, so every day is a long day. Today is gonna be like, it's gonna be a small cook from chicharron. Today is gonna be like 30, 30 babies. Yeah. So what's the regular cook then? 50, 52. Today is gonna be like the refill for the weekend. Our pit master, we have Bolly. Um, Bolly's from Puerto Rico. He actually moved here from Puerto Rico. Man, he's been there since November. He's been a really reliable, hardworking guy and so friendly. Like, people love him at the restaurant because he's, he's just a character, man. I see what Ruben does in New York. I visited him and that day was like, uh, if we if we know each other for like 10 years, you know. Here we are nine months later, puppy. <laughs> you see like a lot of salt, but really is why, why, why I tell you, you know, this is gonna be fall apart. It's just to dry the skin up. So yeah, chicharrón is definitely not a Texas item as we make it, but it is a protein very popular in Texas, which would be pork belly burn ends. Yeah, man, that chicharrón is just epic. This recipe of Ruben is fire, bro. It has a lot, a lot, a lot of spices. I work at the restaurant some days, Seeing the face of the people when they try the chicharron and the and the ribs, that's awesome, bro. That's the real feeling. These are important, man. Mm -hmm. What people be now and on right now. A little rib tips, a little cartilage on the bone. I'll make sure every crevice is well seasoned. Today is, uh, as crazy as it sounds, is not a big cook. Just, it's a very hot day, so we have to take care of the smoker. The best part, wait, wait, and wait right now. <laughs> so he, hey. he gave me the Hey, my man. Accidentally, we fell into being categorized as a great sandwich spot. We had no intentions of that, but hey, when something's great, it's great, right? So we have our Tres Golpe sandwich which consists of fried cheese, which is a very, very common cheese in, I would have to say, Hispanic households in the morning, you know, to go with your breakfast. Our platano maduro, which is our sweet plantain, and our pulled pork. And then you have some bark sauce drizzled on that. So it's like a really good contrast of flavors in there. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Then we have our chopped chicharron brisket sandwich. So we take some of our smoked chicharron and our smoked brisket, put it together, mash it up, put it in a ball, put it in some buns with some with a little drizzle of bark sauce. And it sounds very simple, but it's just a great marriage, to be honest with you. <laughs> They're so different, but dang, I like this one too. Either one, I mean, this is the best barbecue sandwich I've ever had, like, easily. 
It's not even close. Because not only does the cook take that long, but after you take them out, you got to wrap them. So that even takes another couple of hours, so. Doesn't break, Bobby. <laughs> remember, remember that sazon era of barbecue, Bobby. <laughs> I never use the honey like Ruben does. The wrapping technique, it's, it takes the rib to another level. So this food's for the restaurant and also Smorgasbord? Yes, sir. Smorgasburg is one of the biggest food festivals in the nation. It's almost like a talent show. They go in there and they showcase their food. And if they accept you in, you're able to have a spot. So we're doing Saturdays in Williamsburg, day 11 a.m. till we sell out. Right now, because of the restaurant, it's actually great because it falls in line with the regular production. You know, they gotta have their own checklist, make sure they have everything, because once you're at the festival and you forget something, that's it, it's a wrap, you know? The first time I met Ruben, I swear to you, Bobby, the only thing that I that I use to get to Ruben is the music. When I get there, it's like, dun, 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 and I, okay, 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 ah, ver <laughs> We don't have the reggaeton, Bobby, we don't work. People, seeing the new vendors too, also man, everybody that's in their stories, like how they started up, it's it's really cool seeing them. But I believe that there's a culture gap in barbecue. It's because I'm in New York and obviously there's just so much diversity and it's just such a melting pot for culture and food. There's just so many other flavors and proteins that can actually come into barbecue and be just as amazing as that brisket, just as amazing as those pork ribs, but we just need people to be more open to it. And that way, everybody, there's a lot of creative people in the barbecue community, man. And there's a lot of barbecue concepts right now that are really flourishing and adding on to that. So that's absolutely great and fantastic because that's what we want. Yeah, what's up, Jace? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you, man. What's up? What's up? Oh, great. Yeah, I'm getting uh, adding on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. My one pack. Yeah. New York is a place where you can find a Michelin star of hole in the wall. Hole in the wall that's in the basement of a 10 minutes, you're in a very Hispanic dominant area. Another 10 minutes, you're in a very Jewish area, then Chinese area. It's just so much diversity, so much different food. That's why we have the maruz, that's why we have the rice, you know, that's why we have the chicharron, which would be pork. But people, is there something for everybody to be like, oh, to familiarize with and be like, oh yeah, that, okay. Thank you. Just take this piece with me. No <laughs> we have our sandwiches, our chicharron, chopped chicharron brisket sandwich, and then we have our meats, ribs, brisket. So it doesn't have the full menu. You know, it's kind of a little nudge. Hey, go to the restaurant. You want to try everything else, you know? So it's a little bit of advertising too. So, you know. The busiest day of the week is Sunday. Sundays are the busiest days of the week. We have extra weight when it comes to briskets, pulled pork, and chicharron. Our beef ribs are sold only on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday. And beef ribs are just, I mean, come on now. Like, I never knew about a beef rib until I saw a Texas barbecue video. And out here in New York, it's tough to find beef ribs. So that was something that I had to offer. And it's only on the weekends because it takes a lot of space and it's a very costly item, you know. It's like another incentive to come on the weekends and dine in with us, so. And when service starts at 11, you know, we have a good amount of people that are already waiting for the doors to open. So, hey, you don't have to be at 11. You can be there at 1, 2, but after 3, 4, forget about it. It's non-stop. giving that trade to that customer, you feel confident enough to be like, yo, I provided the most highest quality possible and I put my heart and soul in this. Those who think that barbecue is a fad or even bark barbecue won't last, we're still gonna be here. And we're gonna be here for a while. Yo, my man, baby. <laughs> It's 
lot of improvising in barbecuing that differentiates us. This is where we make our dreams come true. We put 100% of our passion into this place you may call a hole in the wall. The people who are searching for that bite of brisket, that bite of ribs, that bite of sausage can find that right here. I definitely love and appreciate being the spot for some people. It's, yeah, it's quite an honor. <laughs> Yeah, so we've been featured on quite a few good good places, Texas Monthly, LA Times, Eater LA. Definitely the most meaningful one will be the Vice video. That one, man, has touched so many people I, that I couldn't believe. And I get a lot of people to come over and try us out, and it's definitely amazing to see as far as how far out the barbecue community can get. Yeah, so Ray's Barbecue is located here in the city of Huntington Park. It's about a 10, 15 minute drive from downtown LA. We're open from Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. or sell out. And that's the fun part about it. We don't know who's stepping in the store. We don't know what company's gonna order. And it's always great to see new people here. When my dad started selling backyard barbecue, he remember having folks having a hard time pronouncing his real name, which is Rene. Ray was a similar nickname to it and it pretty much stuck ever since. He let people know it was Ray's Barbecue, and it stayed from there. On Fridays, we usually try and do, you know, some special. Recent ones have been a crispy pork belly. You know, smoky channel, something I guess you don't find everywhere, but LA vibes with it. People will get it at their North Gate market, you know, a lot of Latino markets. Yeah, we really try and deliver a different take on something that's common here. More traditional rub going on with this one. That's some secret sauce right there, huh? Yeah. And it'll to hit the palate on top of that crispy, crunchy uh, pop. We do ours smoked all the way. You know, almost resembles like a whole hog, uh, which is one of my favorite foods and barbecue. You know, very fond of uh, Carolinas. Oh, nice. Uh, that's why we uh, like to carry cheer wine too. Okay. Um, because it's a Carolina drink. It pairs perfectly with our barbecue here. Uh, yeah, bring that little, you know, that little taste from over there, over here. Wow, that is like so incredibly sweet. <laughs> yeah, I guess like, because I'm just thinking about like the pulled pork, I, I kind of understand like the pairing. Yeah, it's like literally like liquid candy. <laughs> so what would you say is like the drink like LA barbecue? Let's say like a Topo Chico, I don't know, I mean. That's so LA, it's, an, it's like mineral <laughs> water. <laughs> <laughs> Friday night yet. The salt is just dry out the skin. Yeah, it'll come off, so. Uh, and, and like you said, just dry out that skin. It's just days of early mornings and long nights. Uh, definitely lots of patience and uh, attention to detail. Is there a specific like shape or size you're looking for? Yeah. If I put a small one, it'll just burn really hard. At least one that has its like full shape or you know, chunk your log. Uh, we use the white oak. We like the aroma it gives out, how it burns. That's just the middle ground of good lasting wood alongside nice smoke, not too much of a harsh flavor. And I find it, after talking to some pit matches too, that it is, it is the uh, wood of choice here in California without paying the Texas price of imported post oak. So at this point, do you feel like you like mastered the JNR? You know, I, I learn as they go, always. And I'm always tweaking it to see if I always get better results for it. We're using two JNR smoke masters. Our 11 JNRs, to us, they're our babies now. We've been able to pin it down, and there's no other no way we would rather cook off. Uh, right here, down below, right here is the fire block store. Open that up. Got a little fire going. And, uh, you can see right here, little air holes. Um, that's where the smoke in the back will come up. Up top here is that fan. We'll blow it up, blow the smoke around evenly. JNR has been around for 50 years, and it's been right there with the offsets starting off. I think they've been around for 50 years for a reason. Carolinas will base their meat. You use salt. Uh, you use the sauce, this, this kind of sauce, vinegar based sauce. 
because I mean, I, I can't do a whole hog for these GNRs either. The, the belly is, you know, one of the best parts of the pig, so I figured, uh, I mean, at least I can do that, right? <laughs> Wow. So you get like, you know, like it almost has the same elements as like a fried chicharron, but like you can absolutely taste like the barbecue aspect to it. It's like the perfect marriage. Yeah, that's a like top tier pork mm -hmm. belly for sure. Yeah, dude, I'm, okay, let's go get a plate of that. Yeah. <laughs> so we started off as a pop-up here in the city of Huntington Park. Uh, at first, my dad started off with some pulled pork, moved up from there to some ribs. Ever since then, it was all support of the community to the point where we had to re-inspire ourselves to be like, okay, this is good, but we want to be great. So that was when we decided to make the trip to Austin, try Franklin's, and from there, Race Barbecue was reborn but definitely thankful for the plentiful trips that we've made in those previous years to develop the palate that helps me cook today. I'm excited to try it. <laughs> Seeing the hard work people put out and me eating their food and being satisfied and inspired from that. And you know, also from seeing my dad, yeah, I recall seeing him trimming and thinking, uh, you know, I might have to do that at some point. Slicing away at risk, it's the knife work behind it. Easily get into my zone of just trimming away. The most popular protein would be that uh, that brisket. It was a very, at first, uh, I was slow at getting at it. When I first started though, and it took me like four times as long. That's just because sometimes you'll get some different, every brisket looks different, right? So. So learning how and what I want to trim off the brisket, there's a learning curve to that for sure. You know, we stick with that Central Texas style. It's a salt, pepper rub, um, you know, oak smoke. Yeah, just, now it's more, more chill, just, you know, wash the tan, wash the smoke. I mean, we try our best to live up to Texas barbecue because when we first went there, to us, it was a pinnacle experience which is why we you know, try so hard to try and bring it over here. Another big Texas influence would be the jalapeno cheddar sausages, because those are definitely the ones that blew our mind. We never had sausages like this until we traveled to Texas for the first time. I mean, every time we take a bite from anywhere in the country, it, it is inspiring, whether if it's our chicharron, which is inspired by our Salvadoran heritage, which is a necessity for pupusas. Memphis style driver of ribs, North Carolina style pulled pork with its mud sauce. It's barbecue that has various influences, but ultimately, you know, as it's family run, and we put our love into it as a family. And we're honored to put food on the table for others and build a, a relationship off that with them. Today was, was Friday and it was pretty packed. You know, out of nowhere we opened, we have a few people in line. Next thing you know, a bus load comes in where tables are jam-packed. So it could vary, you know, it's all, it's all a surprise here at Ray's. You went back to go though, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Go ahead and take a seat, guys. Yeah, I'm the one who's supervising, making sure our customers are satisfied. I'll go say what's up, check up on them. And that's the cool part where, you know, I'm a, I'm a people's person. I'll, I'll have to see what's up, you know? Master, I would say my brother's the lead pit master. He, you know, he lets me sleep a little bit more, so. But uh, he still does his thing. You know, I, I, I obviously help him out. You know, I would never let him down. He's always quick to, to get my back, whether it be some error in the, you know, in the front of the house and, you know, I'm a little flustered. I'll do the late shifts, but he'll, he'll cover me later in that day to, you know, at least he'll get, get me some rest or something. So we got each other's back, which lets us work comfortably. Is the kitchen lead, keeping quality control, the sides. I'll give all that credit mainly to my mom. Yeah, my mom's definitely la jefa here. She doesn't take any shortcuts. She's the one who built this business with my dad from the ground up. She makes sure we're doing things right, we don't slack off. Yeah, she always, you know, makes sure that I'm doing all right. And it's nice to have someone like that, you know, to check up on you. The pros of working together with parents and siblings is that we're each other's own bosses in a way. Ultimately, we're not really tracking each other's hours or anything. It's, we do what we gotta do. I describe the uh, customer base here at Ray's to be a lot of blue collar,
especially from the lunch rushes we get here, sitting next to the most industrial city here in the west side. Hit around lunchtime, man, we're, we're pretty packed in here, and you know, everyone's on lunch break, so we're crunching down orders as fast as we can. You know, I always say come before one, and we'll have everything. And if not, you're gonna be missing out on a little something if you come a little later. The ordering of half pounds and pounds, you know, that's a little new to some, but you know, we're glad that that people are open to it. Keeping it going then. I mean, they're, they're bringing it all. This is Kelly barbecue for you. And they're bringing it hard and they're bringing it fast. And they're doing what they got. They know their skills, they match the craft. As you can see, selling out, what, like three, four times a week? Come on, you know? Yeah. Raise barbecue for you, don't, don't forget, Huntington Park, California. Building relations with our customer base. And they saw, you know, we're just two young brothers just trying to make it work. They appreciate it and, and you know, they, they uh, show us love for it. There's parts of this uh, lifestyle where, you know, you can feel overwhelmed and there's parts of it where, you know, you're just chilling and smoking away at some meats. In the beginning of February, 2022, we had to decide if we were gonna run this business or not after our dad passed away. When our dad was here holding it down, we weren't sure if it was for us. We were thrown in deep water. We've had zero experience up to this year. We hurtled up in a circle, me, my brother, my mom, and we said we're gonna do this. We took a day off from mooring still fresh after my dad's passing. I had no idea how I was gonna come here, take orders and work like nothing happened. The support of the community was insane. It was insane. And that was when I realized like, this is like our barbecue fam. This is, this is why we need to do it. You know, not just to support each other and pay bills, but we have people that rely on us. For me, it was like a, a way of relieving the morning a little. Um, yeah. At the the time it happened, where we took over, um, you know, I, I look at my work here also as a way to honor him. And so I always try to put out whatever I put out, you know, something that I feel like he would approve of. Yeah, I gotta get me one of those those like gloves right there. Oh yeah, that's clean. Always gloves. Yeah, dude. Always gotta use it now. Saturdays, recently we've been doing beef rib. We'll go in early for that. I always describe it as beef rib as like fatty brisket on a stick. That's the way to describe it to me, like it's like a brisket tomahawk. Customers have been happy that we've been bringing those back. Yeah, me too. I mean, I get a, I get a beef rib every now and then, so it's something in it for me too, but yeah. <laughs> Usually that's also, you know, one of our busiest days. So and yeah, we try to push out so that hopefully um, everybody who comes by on Saturday can get their barbecue fix. I feel Ray's is so popular is because of the experience. We're just a small little joint of me and my brother and my mom. And I come to realization that, you know, when I could either be having a bad thought or stress, whatever it is, there's someone out there waiting for us to open.